Welcome to Biochem Insights with Dr. Shefali. In this video, we are going to talk about structure of amino acids, alpha carbon and chiral carbon of amino acids, its optical activity and the D and L forms of amino acids. So let's start with the basics. We must know that amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. And proteins are essential for nearly every function in our body from building muscles to transport oxygen, from protecting against infections to regulating hormones, etc. And so therefore, amino acids are fundamental to life. Now, amino acids are best friends of each other. Just like how best friends stay connected by the bond of friendship, similarly, amino acids also stick together with a special and strong bond called the peptide bond. Now, any chain of amino acids linked by peptide bonds is called a peptide, which includes dipeptide with two amino acids, tripeptide with three amino acids, and then there is a term called oligopeptide, which is a short chain of amino acids that includes 2 to 10 or sometimes 20 amino acids. But when many amino acids keep linking through multiple peptide bonds, the chain becomes a polypeptide. This polypeptide chain can be 50, 100 or even 300 amino acids long. But the story doesn't end here. What happens is, when these long polypeptide chains fold into 3D structures, they become functional proteins. And now they can perform vital roles as enzymes, hormones, transporters, etc. So I hope now the transition from amino acids to protein is clear to you, right? Just remember that amino acids links into peptides, peptides grow into polypeptides and polypeptides fold into functional proteins. Coming to the structure of amino acid. So this is how we represent amino acid as CH in the center and this CH is attached to corn where CO stands for one functional group that is carboxyl group, R stands for side chain and N stands for amino group which is another functional group. So as the name suggests amino acid has got both amino and acid group as its functional group. Right? So we can say that uh, each amino acid consists of a central carbon atom, a hydrogen atom, a carboxyl group, a side chain and an amino group. And here what you have to remember is that the functional groups in amino acid are carboxyl group and amino group. Now along with the central carbon atom, all the amino acids have three more common components that is hydrogen atom, amino group and the carboxyl group. Now what is left? The side chain or the R group. So the difference in the side chain or the R group results in the different types of amino acids known. Which means two amino acids are different from one another because of their different side chain. Now we have already seen that proteins are made up of amino acids. So therefore the side chain determines the properties of protein. So there are around 300 amino acids occur in nature, but only 20 are found in human body that take part in protein synthesis. Also recently a 21st amino acid selenocysteine has been witnessed to be present that function as coenzyme in antioxidant redox enzymes and hyroid regulating enzymes. And also 22nd amino acid pyrrol that is only found in bacteria. Now each amino acid is represented by a three letter and a one letter code which means the first three letters of an amino acid's name are used to represent it and it has been assigned an alphabet as its symbol. For example amino acid glycine is represented by first three alphabets G, L, Y and its symbol is G. So here are some facts regarding the central carbon atom of amino acids. So the central carbon of amino acids is called by two names. One alpha carbon atom and second asymmetric or chiral carbon atom. Now let us see why central carbon atom is called alpha carbon atom. The central carbon atom is called alpha carbon atom because it is directly attached to the functional groups. Now in amino acid, what are the two functional groups I told you? Amino group and the carboxyl group. 
and so therefore most of the amino acids are alpha amino acids so if you are asked uh, why most of the amino acids are called alpha amino acids your answer should be amino group is always attached to the same carbon atom to which carboxyl group is attached and therefore most of the amino acids are alpha amino acids but there is an exception amino acid proline so what is odd in the structure of proline as you can see in proline the side chain is cyclic and it loops back to join the amino group so instead of a normal nh2 group proline has only one hydrogen on nitrogen and so therefore proline does not have a typical free nh2 group attached to the alpha carbon and that is why proline is not an alpha amino acid whereas i told you most of the amino acids are alpha amino acids now let's see why central carbon atom is called chiral carbon atom or asymmetric carbon atom as you can see the carbon in the center is attached to four different groups hydrogen atom carboxyl group side chain and amino group so it is an asymmetric carbon atom or chiral carbon atom you must understand the difference between alpha carbon and chiral carbon what i told you about alpha carbon alpha carbon because it is directly attached to the functional group chiral carbon because it is attached to four different groups yeah is it clear now also all the amino acids have at least one asymmetric or chiral carbon atom and as you know the exceptions are everywhere so the exception here is amino acid glycine as you can see the structure of glycine the central carbon atom is not attached to four different groups glycine has got two hydrogen atoms so amino acid glycine has no asymmetric carbon now the next fact the molecules with asymmetric carbon atom or chiral carbon atom are optically active which means they can rotate the plane polarized light and since amino acids have chiral carbon atom there are optically active let us understand this so when an unpolarized light passes through a polarizing filter it gets plane polarized and when this plane polarized light passes through a solution of chiral amino acid the chiral amino acid showing the optical activity rotates the plane polarized light either to right or left so we can say that most amino acid except glycine have central alpha carbon atom attached to four different groups which make them chiral and therefore they are optically active when plane polarized light passes through a solution of chiral amino acid it rotates the plane polarized light either to left or right demonstrating optical activity now here the uh, mention of exception amino acid glycine can you think why amino acid glycine doesn't show optical activity so now we know that optical activity needs a chiral carbon that means the central carbon must have four different groups attached in most amino acid that is true as you can see in the image but in glycine the side chain is just a hydrogen so the alpha carbon has two hydrogen and so therefore the central carbon atom which is the alpha carbon atom is no longer a chiral carbon and because there is no chirality glycine does not show optical activity so we can say that most amino acids have central alpha carbon atom attached to four different groups which makes them chiral and therefore they are optically active in glycine the side chain is hydrogen giving the alpha carbon two identical hydrogen atoms since chirality is absent glycine does not exhibit optical activity because of chirality amino acid exist in two forms d and l forms as you can see both the forms look similar but are they same no they are not just like the two hands they look similar but they are not same because they are not interchangeable they are not superimposable similarly the d and l form of amino acid look similar but they are not same so they are mirror images of each other and because they are not superimposable they are enantiomers this is called optical isomerism which is a type of stereo isomerism so we can say that most amino acids have a central carbon atom attached to four different groups which make them chiral based on chirality amino acid exist as mirror images of each other called enantiomers 
that is D and L forms. They are optical isomers and this property is known as optical isomerism, which is a type of stereoisomerism. Now, the important thing to remember is that all amino acids found in human body are L-alpha amino acids, which means the amino group is on the left side of alpha carbon atom. Can you think of an exception? Yes, it is glycine. Since glycine does not show chirality, and chirality is important for the two forms and therefore glycine is an exception other than that serine and aspartic acid occur in d form d serine and d aspartic acid so it is l amino acid which naturally occurs in all biological proteins and therefore proteins are polymers of l alpha amino acids we should remember these facts for mcq purpose so let's quickly summarize what we have discussed in this video so first amino acids join to form peptides when a few peptides join they make oligopeptides as the chain grows longer it becomes polypeptide and when these fold into 3d structure we finally get proteins the functional molecule of life the structure of amino acid consists of a central carbon atom which is attached to hydrogen carboxyl group side chain and amino group there are 20 standard amino acids present in human body. The 21st amino acid, selenocysteine, acts as coenzyme in redox and thyroid enzymes. The central carbon atom in amino acid is called alpha carbon because it is directly attached to the functional group. Exception is amino acid proline. The central carbon atom is also called chiral carbon because it is attached to four different groups and that makes amino acid optically active. The exception is glycine. Due to chirality, amino acid exists in D and L forms. All the amino acids present in human body are L-alpha amino acids and therefore all proteins are polymers of L-alpha amino acids. Exceptions are glycine, D-serine and D-aspartate. So this is all about structure, chirality, optical activity and the D and L forms of amino acid. Hope you like this video. Subscribe, like and share for more such videos.